looking at. All right, folks, over here in lovely Gardnerville, Nevada. This is a nice place you got here, Jim. I'm uh, here with a fella named Jim the Kraken. Uh, is that what your call sign or just uh, That's a nickname? It. That's a, a, a nickname. nickname. Call sign was a little... Yeah. But, um, uh, Kraken became a nickname once I got back and was doing... Riding with a motorcycle organization. And one of the young guys and doing a ride one day, and they're like, you know, if we catch you messing up, and the old timers looked over at me and like, we'll release the Kraken. <laughs> I don't know if it was because I'm super huggy. Like, I just like to hold on a little long. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or if, uh, once I get a hold of you, it's kind of, that's it. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, the end of, it's the end of the game. So, so <laughs> like, are you in, uh, do you roll blue, uh, uh, Getsu? Or? I did long time ago. Yeah. And then uh, when I started getting my butt kicked by the guys I was wrestling, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm just going to get a gun. Like, wow. And I'm going to be good with that gun. There you go. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's always a good idea. You'll have to let me know some guys mm -hmm. in the area. I actually just stopped into D.C. Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Douglas oh, no. County Jiu-Jitsu here in town uh, this good? evening right before you came over, and uh, I hear a lot of good things about those good. guys. And, I uh, want to get my kids started And the, the prices ain't bad there. Nice. So. I, and I'm not too late to start. I'm going right. to learn with them, I think. It's, it's never too late to choke a fool out. That's or right. Or maybe get choked out. That's right. <laughs> and, I mean, if, if push comes to shove, you've got a gun, I've got a rope. Like We, we can probably handle it. And I also, I, I'm not uh, smart enough to know when I'm about to get my ass whooped. So I'm going to, in that uh, military, you find the best tactical. Yeah, and sometimes that's de-escalating the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's either violence of action or de-escalate. Yeah, you'll go all in or de-escalate yeah. as best possible. And, and uh, I spent a lot of time in the protection arena, mm -hmm. and uh, it was all about de-escalating, yeah. right? If you had to go to, to go to guns or hands, every other uh, asset or, or avenue was exhausted. Yeah. That's... uh. Yeah, I I think uh, I always wonder like, uh, we'll we'll get into this. I I've got a I've got a thought I'll run by any other. Uh, we'll we'll get we'll get into it. You know, because we I, I we get in a little bit of politics, and I don't want you to get like you know you've got a, a military law enforcement. We can we can, there's plenty. To talk about over the last year without getting us into. Too much. I say, how, how am I going to get in trouble with the, the the shit that's going on these days? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 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 wild. But so I identify as male. We'll there start you, there. <laughs> there. We, there we go. I, if if that's if that's what this calls for, that right, you right. know whatever. I'll I'll die. Whatever. Um. So Jim Irwin's your name. Uh, your former ranger, former Delta Force guy, and now you, uh, you you're an entrepreneur. I guess you could say that. I uh, I started my own uh, shooting training company called mm -hmm. Shooting Performance Institute, probably about seven years ago. It wasn't named that until recently. It was just training. Yeah. Uh, decided to you know put both feet in the water and, mm -hmm. and actually make a business, get get licensed, and yeah. <laughs> pay my taxes. <laughs> It'd be Lame. legit, right? <laughs> and uh, landed a few pretty good sponsors, and with that, actually got asked to become full, uh, come full time with uh, Staccato Firearms. So, okay. uh, part of that, the caveat to that, me going full time was that I was still able to do the training. You know, mm -hmm. that I've been working so hard on uh, developing. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's full time all the time. Yeah, so, Whether it's selling guns or, or teach people how to shoot from a yard to a mile. So you, you're you just all guns all the time. Pretty much. That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> it's like, what did you do on your day off? Uh, we went and shot. <laughs> that's funny. And I, so I, I've talked to like a, a guy that you're not quite as familiar with, but another friend of yours, you know, Clay Martin, who yep. I met through uh, Thomas Go. High Desert Rifle Work. I guess they do a lot of work here. I don't know. And, um, and – yeah, it's just I, I I keep telling I was like I like guns, but I'm not a, a gun guy, you know. Like I like them. I grew up around them. I think I'm fairly. Well, I thought I was fairly. Started reading guys that I. Or like no, and so I was like, I, at best I'm a hobbyist. Like I'm a little better with a shotgun, but a rifle I'm like I'm a I'm at best a hobbyist. It's it's amazing. 
the depth and scope, you know, that, mm-hmm. that uh, uh, the breadth and width, if you like, um, to become a, a very proficient shooter and wanting to create a very tight group or an accurate, you know, group, like, yeah. um, there, you know, accuracy is, is, um, that's what it's all about. Right. Mm-hmm. And then being able to repeat that process. So Unless you're, so, uh, so <laughs> that's called said, a beaten zone. Yeah. <laughs> Just shooting that direction. A lot of bullets. Stalin said, uh, quantity is a quality of yeah. all of its own. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Uh, but I've been looking to try to repeat that process. Mm-hmm. Well, what goes into that? Right? Yeah. So starting to break down, um, where we can minimize variables mm-hmm. in our shooting, uh, create consistencies or constants. Yeah. Um, and that's a deep rabbit hole. Right? You, yeah. So when I talk, when I first start my classes in long range precision, I talk about how we manage expectations, not only ourselves, but our equipment too. Yeah. And I don't think anybody else is really doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's not that it's a, it's a trick or anything, but I, I need to, I want to set the table, right? Mm-hmm. If you bring your dad's 240, uh, 243, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, 30-06 or something. That's a yeah. badass weapon. Kill a lot of animals. You're not banging steel to grand with it. Yeah. You know, first round hit probability is way down. Yeah. So, you, but I want to manage that, you know, and, and set the table in it so you can understand how we uh, manage our expectations of our equipment and ourselves. Mm. Uh, especially when it pr- comes to hunting, like 200 yard shot with 30 out six, not a bad shot. Yeah. It's going to dump that animal. You're not going 600, you no, know? No. So, you know, to know that, right? And then yeah. manage your expectations. You got to crawl a little closer. You run a 6.5 PRC, 3.3 mm-hmm. Lapua, some of these, uh, you know, even a 6.5 Creed, yeah. 800 to 1,000 yards isn't, is not unreasonable and still carrying enough kinetic energy transfer to drop that animal ethically. So, yeah. um, and where do we find those variables and how do we minimize them? And I, I spent a lot of time on that. And, I think people enjoy that because now they know where they can focus attention, yeah. energy, and money, mm-hmm. right? Instead of just, well, I got to go buy a $10,000 gun. You don't actually have to, right? Yeah. Uh, let me show you how we can well, work am- with that. Yeah, it's an amazing, like, how much technology. It's like, so I, I was, when I was talking with Clay, mm-hmm. you, yep. and like, and so, um, you know, you guys learned from, like, when, when did you get in? I went in, uh, went in in 1989. 89, yep. all right. So you're, you're a little bit older than Clay. You're a little bit older. But, uh, you know, it's all right. <laughs> Don't, well, 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 I'm, I'm sure you I still carry a rucksack, maybe just to the mailbox and back. But. Well, I, I, <laughs> no. I ran two and a half miles last night. Got my knee. All uh, right. So, <laughs> but I'm also. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it's funny, like, uh, you're, you're talking about granddad's old. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the more modern guns yeah. we have out here well it's it's it reminds me a lot when i i wrote a lot of against my when you're a dad you're a tyrant so mm-hmm. my dad yep. was a tyrant old said first time i got on just kind of knew so, what to do already yeah <laughs> it was like Oh, this is why I'm riding these these young pukes to make them into this. Yeah, and, you know, and just, dad's riding that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but like it was just a switch in your head, and you're just like, that's got to be what it is. Like when, like when you're getting basic standard issue, you know, rifle versus like you got something dialed in. Yeah, like, handmade yeah. or uh, you know a very high quality gun. Yeah, and and. To your point, I got a great example to, uh, for that. I took a, my wife and I took out a friend of ours kid, had mm-hmm. a youth hunt, right? And got dad's, uh, I think it was a 243. Um, I don't remember exactly. You know, no, no butt pad on it, metal, yeah. like, or this plastic stock mm-hmm. on the end, right? It, man, I took him out. First of all, like, okay, before we go hunting, I need to see how this gun's shooting. Right, so I want to watch you shoot. So let's make sure it's zero. I'm not gonna just throw you into the fray. Yeah. Um, and okay, so we zero at 100. He's doing all right. And about six rounds in, seven rounds in, he starts to create that flinch response. Right, he's expecting mm-hmm. that hit because he's not holding the gun correctly. Yep. So I start correcting that, and then you know, at 200 yards, the group's it's not good. Yeah, right? it's not good. So I already know in the back of my head. Okay, 200 and in is basically yeah. well, now I'm managing expectations for him. Like, hey, yeah. we got to be 200 and in. I think I can shoot further. Nope. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, you can't. No, we're not. Paper shows up. So I end, yeah, I end up having to go out of town, and Annalise, my wife, takes him out for the, a weekend, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, 
they had about a 400 yard shot and she and he's like he's like jim said i can't shoot this far you know uh, with this gun and this guy's dad is now with him mm-hmm. and he's like that's ah, not hunting that's not hunting you gotta get closer and I was, well i can't get closer can't get closer buck leaves anyway i get back in town while this next day right uh I, before I get back in town, Annalise comes back to the house, calls me, says, that was some bull, right? Mm-hmm. He could have made that shot if he had one of our guns. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <He could've, laughs> yeah. absolutely. So she takes him out the next day before I get home. They go to the range, gets him on one of our guns. It was a 6.5 PRC. Mm-hmm. Um, very smooth shooting gun. I mean, it's a 1,200-yard gun. Easy, yeah. easy. 50, you know, it's a mile gun. I mean, it'll push a mile, right? And uh, anyway, long story short. It's got the pad on it. She goes, they go to the range, they shoot it, and he's just tack driving with this thing. Got rid of the flinch response because the kick's mm-hmm. not there. It's got a, a, a pad. Everything's right. Mm-hmm. We get back. I get back. Uh, we go out again. And it was about a three-week process to get him his deer. Uh, just find the right location, find the deer that is worthy of shooting, and creating the shot opportunity. Yeah. So he gets his shot opportunity. We find this uh, kind of atypical buck, and... Uh, it's 470 through the heart first round hit nice that's awesome <laughs> yeah that thing just went whoa, up and over and oh, done it's right. amazing yeah. that flinch response though. yeah like because i i my first gun was a uh, moss 500 good old pump action shotgun <laughs> yeah. it, it's good for whatever you whatever bird you want to shoot. It, after a while you're gonna feel it yep it's, it's not it's not a like it don't kick like a mule it you got some kick it, to it. it. It'll it'll get to you after a while. Then I, after a while, upgraded a bit. No. Yeah. Different. Uh, just between those two, and they're both just yeah. pump action twelve gauges. But you you can uh, quality of the build. And, yeah. And, and how it manages it, the make the the engineering. Mm-hmm. I guess you could say you know the build the build, um, and how that manages recoil. Right. That recoil impulse. Yeah. Uh, and that's who we said through Benelli? pistols, shotguns, yeah. rifles. Why is it Benelli? I mean, Italy only figured out. I was going to say Italy yeah. because uh, I uh, I did some time up in Oregon where we, we did this big shoot and a bunch of the shotgun manufacturers yeah. come out, right? We called it a cast and, it was called a cast and blast. Um, a really cool thing. A bunch of veterans go out mm-hmm. and in the morning we're fishing for sturgeon. Yeah. Only got on the boat at 10, never catch a damn sturgeon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suck at fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not good. Either. And so, and then in the afternoon we went out and shot shotguns and, and, yeah. and so like all these manufacturers, I'd say there's probably half a dozen manufacturers out there, but uh, Benelli and Beretta mm-hmm. were the ones I was focused on because, you know, Benelli has a great name. Yeah. I'm not much of a shotgun guy, but. I hold my own. Yeah. Uh, we use shotguns to blow holes through doors and get in, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't have to be real accurate <laughs> yeah. for that. So um, I went through, I'd say, a box or two of shells through the Benelli with that mm-hmm. inertia yeah. uh, recoil system and then grabbed a Beretta, I think the 1301. or It's like they're kind of their competition one, yeah. right? I went through probably seven, eight boxes of shells on that thing. I bought a Beretta. The really? recoil management on the thing, I, I think I, racked, I, I ran like three, uh, excuse me, uh, Sub three seconds, six rounds through that shotgun. No shit. Just, whoop, 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 whoop. I was just like, wow. That's <laughs> this awesome. This one. I want this yeah, one. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. So that's and my next one, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> like when you like, like talk about going from like that Mossberg yeah. to Benelli. Yeah. So the quality of the build and then just mm-hmm. the potential, the detail and the engineering and how they manage that. Yeah. Play, pays out huge dividends on the other mm-hmm. end. You can run that Mossberg. Yeah. But you're yeah. not going to be in the game as long as you would with something else of a, mm-hmm. a, a finer quality or a... Uh, more attention to detail no, in the it's, build. It's the same like, thing going from like uh, you know, a prison mud, a highbrow cat. Uh, cold, right, you right. know, it's the yeah. same, same type of deal. You're going to pay money for that highbrow cat. For sure. You, you, it's never guaranteed, but, but never every gun's. Nope. Either, you know? yeah, yeah, I, you, I work they, for a, fire, uh, a pistol manufacturer. We, we say we build the world's best shooting handguns. They also come with a lifetime warranty because every once in a while mm. you get that one that just yeah. needs a little tweaking. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's just always some that are lemons. You know, for yep. whatever reason, they just <laughs> can be lemons, anything. Cars, know? trucks, yeah. and guns. And hor- horses, same way. I always I always bring up uh, Paris Hilton as an Has no reason to keep giving her lineage. Like, she came from very, very successful <laughs> But they're known for building... Hotel. Fa- failed on the tape, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> she, they're known for building hotel empires, and she's known right. for a right, right. dumb. And all right, but yeah, it's like 
you're, if you're paying the money for a highbrow cat cult, Sorry. you're guys. You're probably better chance of yeah. a really badass. Yeah, the higher probability of yeah. first round hit, right? Exactly. <laughs> and we do the same thing yeah. with with uh, long guns, right? Yeah. You're re- you're increasing your probability of first round hit. That's the game. Right? See, so I've I've been trying to do some outreach to the military, in particular special ops. I got I talked to Evan Hafer here a while back. Yeah. That that dude's good a people. Beast. Yeah, He's yeah. Out a beast. Done some like good that, things. That whole. Yeah, Clay Martin. I was, and, and I told him I was like, I have to do a, like a huge caveat. I said there's a lot of similarities between cowboy world. Huge caveat being is like cows aren't. Sh- so I still don't want to get kicked in the face by one. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But it, um, it's not. It's not. Have it try to blow you off your horse. Yeah, it's not quite as dangerous <laughs> as uh, as. Or something, yeah, but maybe it's, still, it's still pretty cool. You pretty guys got dangerous. some some crazy shit you guys do, though. Yeah, I got an idea. Let's drink some beer and get on this bull. Yeah, <laughs> screw exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> See, and so this is why I, like, I, I, I keep thinking, you know, the military community, the cowboy community, they're they're kind of one and the same, they're different, but they're because there's when, when you ride out every morning, you got to know that like there might be some shit down that you mm-hmm. got to be able to know. my horses. Top of me, I gotta count on this off or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's the same same type of deal. So like, even if you don't like, because a lot of a lot of the military guys I've talked, to, not real big fans of why we're in Iraq and Afghanistan. Still there. You're there, yeah. You're, you're property. You're of the gonna US. do your work. Yeah. yeah, you're property of the U.S. government, so you're there. So you're not fighting for the government or whatever. You're fighting for these guys. Here your brother because, next to you. Yeah. <laughs> because that's you can't quit. Home. <laughs> you can't yeah. quit. But you know, if you if you look at that. The, what's the word I'm looking for? Sometimes I, I, I search for that word. The similarities, or, mm-hmm. or at, at its root, its base, um, cowboying, you, know, you, you have to be good at your craft, or you're not mm-hmm. a good cowboy, you're not going to get hired. Exactly right. right. Which means you need, to, you need to perfect your craft, your skill set. You need to you know, train, educate yourself on mm-hmm. your, not only yourself, but your ropes, your horses, your saddles. Like, yeah. <laughs> there, it's the same thing we do with our kit, right? Yeah. And some of us take it. A little further than others like mm-hmm. not every army dude is a fan of that right i'm right. here i'm gonna do my four years and i'm out right yeah got my gi bill popping smoke mm-hmm. where i took every opportunity to challenge myself in the military i just i, I always wanted to prove to myself that i could do it right? yeah somebody said you can't do that <laughs> oh watch me right yeah it wasn't for anybody else you don't do it, it wasn't it was for me them. yeah you it was for me back, like six months later and like oh by yeah. the way <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was pretty young when I made the unit. You know, I was 25. Yeah. Uh, that was, I won't say it was unheard of, but it was rare that yeah. a guy my age, um, I had the, the, the proper mindset. I, I was willing to, to just push myself to the, to the limits because mm-hmm. that, that's just who I am. And I think yeah. that's kind of where you guys are too. I say you guys, you know, with the high, the high end cowboys, not the, the weekend dudes that yeah. are like you make a living in a saddle, mm-hmm. like you're perfecting your craft because. You want longevity, and you want to make, uh, you, you want to make any of those oh shit moments, yeah, as as uh, least catastrophic as possible, yeah. right? I want to be able to get out of this without as much as yeah. a little damage as possible on a horse or in a in a, in a shoot house, right? <laughs> Not, more CGB. similarities. The pay is shit on both. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> the pay sucks. Yeah, don't make. <laughs> I, I quadrupled my pay a month after I got out of the army. <laughs> I like I'm I'm working on a way to where I can. Like make exponentially just doing this shit, right? So I can lose it all running cows, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just so like, I've been doing a bunch of a bunch of outreach, trying to just like I I think there's you know just the more of like these similar have and like the more the more that we're all talking together mm-hmm. and doing cool shit together, the less impact that. Oh or yeah, whatever. That's a. That's a beautiful place. Uh, it used to be. <laughs> San Francisco used to be one of the cool cities on right, the right. Know? Yeah. Uh, wild, but you know that uh, I don't know the exact number, but the white population, white Caucasian, mm. you know, Americans in in it is like in the teens, if like low teens, 
like 50 plus percent is uh is uh like japanese american and uh, for some reason i looked that up i googled it for some reason it's like over 50 percent of the population in that area is of like japanese descent yeah so it's kind of crazy right but um when you start thinking about it it's like that's not that crazy because yeah. of the immigration um you know, the technology base and, and their their um What's the word? Like a, their affluence, or not, affluence isn't the word, but their draw to that type of tech type yeah. area. Yeah, well, and then they yeah. already had that like, strong like base, base yeah, they, right yeah. there from you know, railroads. Yeah, you know, yeah, they were absolutely. All, yeah, they were Chinese, there, Japanese. So. Yeah, um, pretty interesting. As I say, yeah. we're, we're a major minority in that part of the uh, yeah. Of the world. It's it's weird, and well, I, people with reason that part of the world. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 weird, but uh, you know, it's I I just think you know what is like the the media is gonna focus on they 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 call it the silent mind. We don't make a fuss, right? But I think if they make like, a fuss when you need to, yeah, and that's, exactly. I think that's the difference between. Uh, I'm not going to go deep on that one, but I think that's the difference between us and, like, a, say, a, a, a pure liberal. Like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bark and and, and pound their chest because they want to be heard. Yeah. Where we're like, I'm gonna wait for when it absolutely is necessary, mm. and I need to be heard, and like, I need to be heard. <laughs> yeah, like the silent minority or majority needs to have a little bit more of that liberal instinct to mm-hmm. like bark when bark not quite at everything, but they need to have just. Touch more Karen in them to like so, <laughs> more so, Karen. <laughs> yeah, so it so it stops it in its in right. its tracks yeah. instead of where you have to like peel all back later. That that's kind of the always been the problem of violence. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We, and then we, somebody else is looking to take credit or, or yeah, whatever. Right, I, we, I can give a damn about you know getting credit for something. Like if I if I know the truth, and I think that's what <laughs> you'll find in the majority of special operations is they they. They kind of covet that silent, you know, that quiet mm. professional. I won't say silent, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> maybe, <coughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I joke. I love our, I love our, uh, our sister units at that level. But uh, um, what, god what damn, did, what like, did how many more books can we get? What he squeals here. <laughs> I and like I said, I, I didn't, I never served in the military. I, I, I got to take a break for and get open one of these. Tasty oh yeah, broken. Squ- not a paid sponsor, Sales pitch. but if, if you'd like, <laughs> gladly drink your beer. <laughs> paid in beer. Um, this is really good. Uh, yeah. I, I like it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank. You. Uh, this is uh, Jim's. One of the, <laughs> I, I I wanted to do this with Boots O'Neill. Dang fangled technology. I know. So I'm just like trying to make it as easy as possible. Like I finally got to meet him in person. Really good. Well, hopefully, hopefully the the videos dog shit on this one. The audio is good. Yeah. Well, the, the we don't audio, have a lot of light, but you can see it. The audio is good here, and uh, we're we're, uh, I can, I've been, we're we're awesome here. But yeah, I I appreciate. I'm funny as um, I've been meaning to. Or, Kind of halfway trying to get a hold of you. Not, not really trying to. I said it. Once you get some of a certain level, out of control. They they do to to a point, and I I do my best to answer them because I don't feel that I'm above answering questions. Like yeah. you know, I had I had a cool career, uh, and still do. But you know, a job's a job. At yeah. the end of the day, the job didn't define me. Um, I did it because I wanted to challenge myself, uh, yeah. but it didn't, it didn't, I, I guess it did define because I did special operations. I did make it to the mm-hmm. top, but I don't think it should ever change your personality and, and add ego where ego is not necessary. No, uh, it's just um, like, uh, like a closure. Almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yep. Yeah, yeah. I did that. And you know, in and out, like what, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I got to be there and I, and I made it, uh, but I, I don't like. I, I'm trying to grow my name in this area, mm. but not based on that. Like as a, as a firearms instructor, right? And a, and a guy yeah. who's legit, not off of my past credentials. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You like, want, you want to you want people to know you're good at what you do because yeah. you're good at what you do. Yeah. Not because. And then you're it's like, the oh damn, and he was that right? No, no and, like no, I made it. 
as Delta Force mm-hmm. because I'm good. Not mm-hmm. not be- I'm not good at what I do because of Delta Force. Right. I made it there because I'm good. Yes, yeah. that's my hope. And so I, I've been still kind of under the radar in our area, and we're starting to pick up some some steam and get noticed by guys like yourself in the in the, yes, the, the 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 law enforcement community i'm starting to create some training for local law enforcement and getting asked to come you know to different states i've got guys coming from other states to mm-hmm. take my training uh so i've got guys coming from oregon utah florida texas like to me that's that's setting like i'm starting to reach that level of yeah okay now you know the name's legitimate my training is legitimate beyond my name. Yeah. Because once you get here, based on my name, you come out here with, damn, that was good training. It was quality training. Yeah. And it all made sense. I re- I put it in, in terms that made sense. You retain the information, mm-hmm. and it's relevant, right? You you, yeah. you can produce so that, whether it's on a hunt or sur- increasing your survivability and your lethality. Yeah. Right? Hell yeah. So, all right, so you went in 1989. When did you, when did you get out? December of 2000. 2000. Oh man! So he made it to the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> on the Super Bowl yeah. team, right? <laughs> and, so, like, what was that moment like when he's like, uh, "If I can't," I was like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> I, I was wondering because, like, uh, there's been so many times, like, where I, 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 I would, uh, I can't make it to that rodeo. The team that asked me to, like, they won. Like, yeah, yeah, they won. Right? And I'm like, mother. Fucker. Yeah, and that's kind of how it happened. And the as, guy they replaced me with wasn't as good as yeah, me either. Yeah. And you're just like, God damn it. So I, I, so I was in, the, you know, I went in 89, got to the Ranger Battalion right after Panama Invasion. Right after the Panama Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I, I do my time with the, the Ranger Battalion. I want to go to Alaska. So I leave in like, uh, what was it, March or April of 94. They go to, I think it was Haiti. Like a month after I leave, I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Oh shit! They, they never had to get off the ship, but I mean, but they deployed. Like, hey, yeah. we're gonna go beat some ass. Like, yeah. you know. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me right now?" <laughs> right. So, so did you go? Because my my biological dad went to Desert Storm Medical Unit. Did you, you do no, uh, it? So what was that like 91? Right? Yeah. I think it was 91. So that that was big army type of, of combat, right? Yeah. So we uh, special operations. And now I'll, I'll I'll say that lightly. Uh, the the Ranger Battalion as a an elite infantry unit wasn't necessarily needed where we needed more like tanks. Yeah, because it was more aircraft. Of a you know, uh, uh, helicopters. Yeah. Right. Conventional type. Hey, we're gonna bow up. Yeah. And we're gonna push across. And if we need to thump you, we will. Yeah. But we really didn't have to. Yeah. So we didn't. You know. Uh, and there, uh, I think some of uh, like the unit I'm sure was over there. I mean, because we're gonna those guys will push immediately. Yeah. Uh, and be used in a limited capacity, but the, the Ranger Battalion didn't necessarily deploy. There yeah. was a platoon, if I remember correctly, that went in and took out like a radar site. Like that yeah. was it. That was it. Like, <laughs> like, God damn it. Like, okay, I wasn't in that battalion. I was in a different battalion, yeah. right? And so, then it except, just like we didn't. We suffered pretty much. No, no. I, 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 absolutely no disrespect, but I didn't look at that as the 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 the, the ninety one gig is a more of a war is hey dude we're gonna come here and beat your ass you better get out was, and they did right we went and saved kuwait like riot right us, and, right? and but i know there's guys that went over there and that was that was a, uh, how do you say that? their claim to fame yeah. cool I, hey no like i said no disrespect i our unit didn't go but it it it, 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 it didn't hold a candle to what the 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 uh the war on terror yeah ha- has done like right was, so there's I and I'm sure. His claim. Storm and I was like, in Desert Storm is that? Yeah, and I was like, so if unless that's like real, real, real classified, that didn't happen. <laughs> Nothing I heard of, and I'm not, not like saying, I said, I'll give the devil his due. Like, yeah. if it did, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, and then so, like, I where's your book? Say, like, I, yeah, <laughs> right. So, like, but, I don't want to say it didn't happen, but like yeah. I said, and, and but I, I, I trust you, but I want to verify. Like, I'll right. <laughs> show yeah, me some like, proof on that I mean, one. We, we don't have to have like full, you know, after action, but like, like yeah, something. I yeah, like, I honestly haven't heard of anything from that. 
time frame that was um, of that magnitude. Yeah. But what was that? maybe it did, man. Maybe what was did. that one movie that uh, talked about? You know, it was on. Yeah. And it's so. Hurry up and wait, dude. Yeah. Like that, that that should have been like the motto of the military. Yeah. I need yeah. you to hurry up. No, just uh, just wait, wait. Waiting on the word. Waiting on the word. It's uh, the same. Yeah. Too. It's the same God. Be there at sun up. You know, if you if you're uh, if you're not saddled up and ready to go. Right. So you get there 30 minutes. 9 o'clock, you're fine. Like, Moving cows. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and what well, and it's you know as, as a day, basically, you get there at right out till nine. You're like, well, hey, god damn it, man! Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we hopefully we're done by noon so I can I can get <laughs> a full day's work. Yeah, it's a, it's funny. My exposure to the the cowboy side of things when when I, I met my wife, uh, she's a cowgirl. Like mm-hmm. she's she's rude, roped. Old cows off mountains, like mm-hmm. she's done it all, right? Yeah. She's got a she's got a fantastic horse. Um, now we have four. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, I met her. I said, "I got to tell you right now, I'm not a cowboy. Yeah. Like I'm not a cowboy. Like I'll get on it, yeah, yeah. and I'll learn, but I'm not a cowboy. Yeah. Like I'm fascinated with what they do, but I'm not that guy. Right? I yeah. don't want to get on a bull. I don't want to yeah. fuck around with that. Uh, and, uh, and we've been together six years now." And I've learned a lot. I can stay on a horse. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I'm not, you're getting dumped on it. You know, it, it so I, I would say I'm decent. Yeah, but I'm not a cowboy. Yeah, right? well, see, I got a this, hat. I never wear it. Yeah. <laughs> Saying this is this is why I say that, like the the cowboy community and the military community, like they they mesh really well because we appreciate that. Like, don't bullshit me. Don't yeah, tell hey, me you can do something. Yeah, well, like, uh, there's, there's a name for it. <laughs> you know, like there's there's a certain level of fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. But at some point, you just gotta be like, hey, man. Yeah, it's gross. In your guys' community, it's grossly obvious when they don't know. Yeah, right? well, it's and, grossly and I'm sure, obvious. I'm sure, it and is it is on, the same on our yeah, side. And right? So it's like at that point, you're just like, no, I'm fine with you. Fence. Yeah. Like, get off yeah, the yeah. fence, please. I'll, I'll, <laughs> what, what do they call it when you uh, when you're Brandon and you gotta basically. You know, dump the cow like yeah, so you can hold him down yeah yeah flanking right yeah and they let me go uh, so my first time flanking mm-hmm. right i'm a big dude yeah so i'm like it's goddamn cow like, like uh it's a uh calf right yeah it's about 150 pounds not these <laughs> <laughs> they were about 300 oh yeah uh, so and they're like yeah you just reach over and you're gonna hook this leg and you just pull up and knock yeah. them on their side i'm like all right like I can do that. Like, I'm yeah. mad dog these suck- suckers, right? <laughs> and there's like 80 of them. I got through about 30, 40 of them. My knees were freaking just oh, like yeah. throbbing, this and that. Like, that's that's a lot of effort. And they're big. They're big calves, right? They're not 150. They're, yeah. they're big. They, they yeah. did it late, right? And uh, these goddamn cowboys let me go about half the day. Yeah. And they're like, you know, there's a better technique. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and that, see that's, that's exactly like I said. They, the same mentality. It's like, <laughs> We'll sit back and chuckle, watch yeah. you watch you get your ass yeah, kicked. Like, and then when and they're it's like, almost check done, check this out. When yeah. it's almost done. What do you mean? You just grab the tail. <laughs> well, we rope this leg, hit this leg. Then yeah. you just pull the tail. Boom, down. I'm like, yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, but I appreciated that I got a taste of the difficulty. And, the, yeah. well, and they put me on some big freaking calves, and I was helping. I didn't get paid for it. I got some beer, so I'll take payment. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it builds that respect. Shout out. And I think. Austin. Yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> but I think it it builds that respect. I don't have yeah. to go put you in front, of, you know, in a line of fire. I can put you through some some drills. Yeah. That I might do in twenty seconds, and it takes you a minute. Right? Yeah. You're like, how the hell did you do that? Right. Same thing. Yeah. In in your community, and so if you're interested in that type of stuff and wanting to learn, I teach it. Yeah. You can teach it. Yeah. That's the other beauty of it is it's the willingness to share that knowledge. Yeah. It's not a, I'm better than you. You'll never be as good as me and sit on the fucking fence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, come I, here, man. Let, let me I, show you. So I, I'm guessing like, hey, like those old Vietnam era guys. That's man. why I joined guys like that. Man. Yeah. And yeah. so like, so guys like for me, like a uh, or guy from the Jackie Hedges, like they've been doing it. Ever, and they're willing to sit down and talk with a guy, you better learn 
Better listen. And pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and because they want to give you the time. And the cool thing is now we've got better stuff, no more than they did back there. So not only take their like level of and do to craft, but get that mm-hmm. we can do even better than them. Like yeah, make, absolutely. And then you That's can it. you can look back at them like, can you imagine what those guys could? We have but now. No, well, you look in the sniper community. You go back to um, draw a blank. I gotta show my ass here. Uh, you go back to uh, you know Car- Carlos Hathcock. He was running mediocre gear at best. Yeah, and slaying it, slaying it. You know who who takes a single round fifty like a fifty cal like machine gun? Yeah, and loads a single round and hits a dude at two grand like with iron sights, right? Like, yeah. Like there, there's a level of just ability, like talent, just right. embedded in your genes. <laughs> yeah, like who, who's that? Uh, that Russian pepper from? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't remember the name. I don't. I should because I, you know, well, we did all the studies on all that stuff. And you know, we're uh, we're all America here. Yeah, the so, Russians, but, but yeah, but we did studies on this stuff because you you got to appreciate talent and yeah, skill you set, know, right? And, like, and the craft because it's not always about the shot. It's also about getting into that position, mm-hmm. right? And your your uh, uh, your bushcraft and not getting caught or, or yeah. seen. Right? It might only be an eighty yard shot because you were able to get that close and not yeah. get caught or seen. Right? There was a, I I really appreciate that side of stuff. Like when yeah. you can go in and dominate a space because you're so freaking sneaky, like, yeah. and you're dropping people. Like, oh, that's, uh, that's yeah, so it's. Cool. But, that's like well. <laughs> we also talking about we're talking about killing people, but like, well, but that that was the that was the that was the deal, and why I found it so fascinating as as opposed to being a submariner or a tanker or mm-hmm. a pilot. Like I really was fascinated with that aspect of it, and then growing up here in the mountains, and I yeah. like hunting. Uh, I didn't do a lot of hunting growing up. I had a wildlife biologist for a mom and a hippie for a dad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I. I was fascinated with that side yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. So did you grow up around? Uh, yeah, Mammoth June Lake. So nice. two and a half hours down the road. Oh right? yeah. Graduated. You know, you know where Lee Vining is? Uh, I know of it. I'm you, not... you drive right through it. Yeah. See, <laughs> you I... blink your eye, you're done. Three hundred people in that town. That was actually where the high school was. Nice. And like three three towns went to the one high school. See, so. I, I grew up in Colorado, and I've my my experience Port and San Francisco. It's yeah, like, if you like, hit Bridgeport, go another twenty miles down Conway, mm-hmm. and M- Mono Lake, Lee Vining, yeah. right there. Yeah. Nice. I like. I know where it's at. I'm just yeah. you know, over there. You know, like of course, growing up in Colorado, California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, so I was born and raised in California, but I, I, I don't go. I can't go back. <laughs> I never go. Oh, I I'm pretty much an outlaw there. I, I just I feel bad for all, for all the good folks of California. I went mean, on, you know, being close are now like, you know, most of the uh, the ranchers. In valley they they ranch on both sides of the border and yeah just like, for there's, sure there's a lot of good people it's just like every other state it's little pockets that absolutely everything. absolutely yeah i don't know i think i think the tide's changing i think at some point people will uh become very aware of reality right like well, exactly. they, they, they voted this way it will show its ass at some time at, at some, some point right it's gonna show its at ass at some point <laughs> like you can't sustain in reality, right? Yes, yeah, only yeah. so long. The promises and, and the, the shallow promises, or whatever it might be, right? Yeah. It's just, it's well, and uh, this folk stuff, like it just like keeps reaching. And, like at some point, you got to be like, no, this this is not reality. <laughs> no, like I mean, I I've been at it for a long time, but like yeah, like you see more and more people just like. All right, all right. Yeah, like how <laughs> how many tyrannical things can you say before somebody's like, "This dude's like that shit." Well, like, <laughs> you have the Surgeon General saying that, like, no, we step up their algorithm on vaccine information. It's like, <laughs> why the, is the Surgeon General telling relying on social Facebook, media right? companies? <laughs> yeah. What? yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should just have better information. Right. That would be better. Yeah, and you can you know you you can put that out on on, uh, on national television. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh yeah. Oh shit. They're all biased too. Well, most of us. Like, it's <sighs> finding somebody who's not getting paid or handout. You know, it's it's it's, it's hard these days. I mean, it, we're all working for a purpose, but yeah. I was just like man, sometimes you're just like yeah, some, gone man. At some point, like we not remember 
integrity at all. <laughs> like, just there's not anything in the back no. of your mind that just morals that. morals are gone. No. Yeah, it's it's it, weird. It, it, yeah. It's, it's morals weird. and ethics, man. Yeah, it, it's weird. <laughs> delicate balance. Well, it's like yeah, I can make that shot, but but I make right. that shot. And I'm like you're you're in the perfect spot. So like, what what's what's the longest uh, shot you've ever made? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand yards. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's the farthest it. I've pushed uh, where we could get the distance, had the right equipment to do it. Um, and yeah, two thousand yards is my is my longest actual impact shot. Yeah. So that's over. A, yeah. So seventeen sixty is a mile. We push that. We uh, we run a mile on our training where we're at out there yeah. in Smith Valley. If you have the right gear, right, you're not mm-hmm. gonna take a three hundred eight and expect a first round hit at a mile. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody really expects a first round hit at a mile. <laughs> if you're in the first three rounds, like you're kicking ass. Yeah. Um. So two thousand yards is quite a poke. Um. It's amazing how much can happen in those 300 yards, right? Like yeah. when you're talk- talking ballistics and, and the, the drop rates and uh, going transonic, depending on where that happened and instability of the bullet. But crazy enough, the day we did it, I was a buddy of mine, uh, my buddy Ted and I, we were up on this mountainside. Had a big old, I think it was like a 30-inch plate at 2,000 yards, and he had a 408 shy tac right, which is pretty phenomenal rifle yeah. it's impressive it's I've an impressive gun one. it's an impressive gun monolithic bolted uh, bullet that the, the highest bc's out there and we're looking at the winds trying to figure out the, the atmospherics at that distance we're also considering a uh, uh, coriolis effect which is yeah. rotation of the earth blah 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 and we're like i don't know man like <laughs> five minutes we're debating winds going one way at one distance winds going the other this i'm like you know what aim center mass pull the trigger man let's yeah. get an impact Somewhere, like, see if we can find it, and then we can adjust from that. I'll be damned if that dude didn't hit dead nut center, almost mathematically dead nut center of the plate. No shit. So the winds push it one <laughs> way, and then the winds picked it up, brought it right back, boom, center mass. I'm like, no way, dudes. They sharpied that because we had two buddies down there watching. So far, we had to, like, had drive somebody down there, watch, you know, offset, and then call the hits. Yeah. Uh, so he was 50%, two out of four hits at two grand. It took, me a little bit, it took me a little bit, but I, I had a different rifle, a three seventy five. Uh, shy attack and the my math was wrong on the projectiles mm. they were moving about 400 feet per second slower than i thought and we were like 120 yards short i'm like mm. what the hell is going <laughs> figured out that the bullet wasn't flying as fast as we thought it was yeah boom hit yeah. nice once we figured it out hit uh so i was pretty happy about so that a 2000 round hit is like a ass because you're just like <laughs> yeah, it's 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 moving around. It's uh, because you can get if you're a seal, you would. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of different stuff going out in there. We talk about it uh, in my classes, like even at I say uh, a mile shot, you know, seventeen hundred sixty yeah. yards. I'm like, all right, dude, you see the target, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what do you think your wind hold is? Like, well, and I was like, where are you looking? Like, you know, about two-thirds of the way of the target, this thing. I'm like, all right, that works, right? Um, what do you think it is? Like, what do you see? Mirage, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, that. And I'm like, all right, let's consider this. That bullet is about 140 feet over your head <laughs> at its <laughs> highest trajectory. You're not looking up into the atmosphere. like up at yeah. 140 feet and going, I'm going to call wind up there, right? Yeah. You're looking at the ground yeah. and, and uh, the environmentals are there to try to get a guess yeah. at what you think it is, right? So... It, when you start considering that, like the bullet is that high above you, and what's going on up there is not what you're seeing down here, most likely, uh, probability of first round hits really start to drop. Yeah. And, and, but you get a quick appreciation of that when we start to put that picture together for them, right? And they're yeah. like, "Holy crap!" Right? And then when they hit, they're like, "How do we ever pull that off?" There's so many reasons we shouldn't, <laughs> we should not make this shot, and we do. How did that yeah, happen? yeah. And we That's just awesome. did. Like, they're pretty stoked about it. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. All right, so you were like basically 100 percent peacetime military then. Yeah, 99. percent So I went over to the Balkans in '97 during the Balkan War. Okay. Um, but my job over there was doing protection uh, for the four-star general. So one of the uh, subtasks of, of the unit I was in was providing protection for four-star generals in high-threat uh, environments. So when we'd rotate rotate that over, you know, between us and the and Dev Group, uh, so 
I was over there during that, right? And yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty neat place. But it's one of those things, like, damn it, like eighty nine to two thousand. Uh, you know, Panama Desert Storm. Uh, I was in military free school, free fall school when um, uh, remember the uh, the hostage thing down in Peru? I think it was Peru. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. the embassy thing, and, and I'm like, that was that's our jam right there. Yeah. Like we're going right. Yeah. Uh, they let the Americans go. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, damn it. Uh, you know, and then I get out in December 2009, 11 happens in 2001. Yeah. The, I got over, I went back to Bosnia in February of 2001. So I got back into, I, I went into protection work, right? Yeah. Uh, so I was getting into these high threat areas as a protection specialist, wasn't kicking doors. Mm. And then when, Deserts, uh, excuse me, uh, 9-11 kicked off. I spent uh, like two more years in the Balkans working for this ambassador uh, I had a great relationship with, and he's like, I don't want you going over there. I want you to stay here with me. Yeah. And then finally, about two, uh, late 2003, like, I got to go. Like, I got yeah. to gotta go get my, my toe in the water. Yeah. Right? So I spent a, about a year and a half over in, uh, in Iraq and then went to Israel for a year doing protection work, went to Afghanistan nice. for about a year, and then uh, – uh, I had to call it quits at that time. Yeah, I was, I was, so, so the shit that you saw was not even for Right. So <laughs> I, I did all this high-speed shit, right? But in, in all reality, I was over there as a contractor, right? I still got in the shit. I just wasn't getting Which, to kick doors. I was getting shot at, mortared, blown up, rocketed, like all this shit. Yeah. But I wasn't doing the job I trained for for yeah. a decade, you know, over a decade, you 12 were, years. You were doing it as, I mean, and don't don't take it the wrong way, but you're doing it as a mercenary. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a, no, it's a new name for it. It's yeah. called contractor. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's it's the Mercs of the sixties and seventies, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Merc, uh, Merc we, is but what they Merc, call Merc technically is means we're hired by another government, though. Yeah. We're working for our own government. Yeah. Well, all right. So, um, speaking of which, what do you think about Haiti? Uh, in what aspect? Uh, what this this recent assassination? Now they're talking. Oh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to light me because I don't even watch TV. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know there was an assassination. Oh, man. All right, we got we got some shit to dig into. It. All right, so the president of Haiti was assassinated. How long ago? Uh, less than two weeks. No way. Was it? Uh, uh, so Papa Doc was the the tyrant of the day. Yeah. So and then there was, was this kid. Uh, that was Baby Doc. Baby Doc. Yeah. And, and now there was a guy just after that. It was Jovenal Moise. Moise. And, was and he the singer dude or the the? Uh, not for sure. Or I'm like the artist. Sure. Uh, What's well, okay. funny is because you know a little bit about Haiti, apparently. Hey, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. so I've got a I've got a little brother that we adopted from Haiti, and I've got a nephew. Uh, oh, right also on. Also, both from France. So yeah, I, yeah. I know I know just enough to get me in. Yeah, uh, same here, same here. And, and I, I got like, an opportunity I, to go there once. Yeah. So I I never been there, but like my my mom was there, my sister was there, and I've got two family members like they that grew up in it, but they were they they left before. You you remember the big earthquake that like yeah, crashed? Yeah. I, I got there like a week after that earthquake. I oh. figured out a way to get in there and check it out. Right. Oh, so, um, so you, so, yeah, you I saw got to, the, the shittiest country on earth. Yeah, and I saw the, the hierarchies. And, and uh, so the guy I went with uh, as my translator, if you will, yeah. um, was from there. But he was um, of the higher level. So basically, uh, from my understanding, like if you're more white in that area, you're more of the affluent yeah. types. You have the nicer. Because right. those are beautiful areas. The further you go up the mountain, you know, it's not a flat, yeah. as, you, as you know, it's not a flat well, uh, the, island, right? It's, 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 it's basically, like it's a mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going in, in, into the Dom Rep, uh, Dominican yeah. Republic on the other yeah. side, like beautiful beaches, this, and then you come over and it's like deforested and this mm -hmm. and that. But the more affluent guys live further out of, off oh, the, yeah. off Port-au-Prince, up in, uh, and anyway, so we stayed with, with this guy's family mm -hmm. and they had like security on the house and all this yeah. right after the earthquake. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, and then you go two miles down and I'm driving with him and it looks like, it looks like, uh, uh, uh what would be the word? Like right after like a, a catastrophic event, right? That's like next gen. Oh, so uh, like, uh, like when Mount St. Helens. Ever yeah. Like is, you, uh, there's still like buildings smoldering and yeah. smoke like, coming out. Like, the, like, seeing, like, the yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. It was of that. Of it was, it was really kind of, uh, 
uh, surreal, right? Yeah. And I'm all about it. He's like, we shouldn't be down here. And like, it was getting dark. I'm like, hell yeah, we should. Like, <laughs> this is when it's good. Yeah. He's all sketched out. I'm like, this is this we're, is the we're shit. Going right? to Middle Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I've got guns and stuff. And I'm like, this is this is what I'm after. I wanted I wanted that uh, that essence or that feeling of that sense of is it dangerous or not? But like during the day, you have uh, like th- tens of thousands of families living liter- or or have been their, their their lives destroyed and they're living on the side of the street for lack of a better term yeah um and like blankets and and sheets on there so they're not burning their feet and they're like that's your house now that eight by eight yeah. is sheet of uh, of cloth because their house crushed crumbled yeah and, you know and they were it, it was it was pretty surreal and yeah man i tell you what then you look like 20 minutes later you drive down there's still a kid trying to pedal like a uh, uh, a yo-yo or something right, like yeah. like these guys are like the ultimate entrepreneurs like there's this catastrophic event there's people living on the street and dude's just trying to show you a yo-yo at a stoplight yeah yeah so <laughs> that like, wasn't working <laughs> my my little brother that we had in Vietnam uh other died in childbirth and his so his dad remarried but his uh stepmother hated him Like age, right? He just out. He he left. <laughs> I'm out. Little, Deuces. Yeah, he left, <laughs> he left this little hamlet and moved to Nha Trang, which was one of the bigger cities in South Vietnam. And he just lived on the streets. Yep. He just figured out. And of course, living on the streets in uh, South Vietnam is a little different than. Uh, yeah, the survival, <laughs> the, the, the survival instincts got to be high, right? Yeah. Um, and just like I said, at that age, trying to figure it out. I mean, it's yeah. like you, there. I believe that at some level, it's just ingrained, right? That survival, yeah. that survival instinct. Yeah. Um, some people just don't have it, man. They just don't have it. Right. And I they live so. in the areas uh, they do because that's how they feel. Um, and it's people, sad, like, man. When, it's absolutely when sad. Something like really crazy happens. Instead of reacting, they oh, they give up. <laughs> uh, I I uh, remember I was at a, a pub in in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking to the, uh, I'm with a buddy of mine, and this lady's sitting next to us, and she's like, oh, so what do you guys do? And we start talking guns, and she's just like completely offended immediately and all this. Uh, I'm like, well, we're just trying to help people like be able to defend themselves and their loved ones. And that she, I'm like, wouldn't you, like, if it came to that, that moment, like, would you not defend yourself and protect your kid or something if you had a kid? She's like, no. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't kill somebody. I'm like, well, then you're a victim. You're dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. and your kid. Yeah, but you, there's that. That's you. That's well, that's how it, you are. Not the not your uh, stepbrother or, or the the, uh, the kid oh, my, that oh, eight oh, years yeah, old living on the street brother, of Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's that's not him. No, no, no. He, <laughs> that dude's he's he's, he's, he's going live. all in. Right? Yeah, exactly. He's going to live. Yeah. This the, then there's that sheep. Right? She's yeah. willing to just die because she's not willing to defend herself well that's your your cannon fodder man yeah (laughs) and in the words of uh stalin you're a statistic yeah yeah absolute statistic right Uh, so anyway back to hades they there was 28 armed gunmen uh this mansion they shot the president 12 times killed him uh his wife Sorry, the Korgs are playing at the same time. <laughs> it's all right. Um, and, like, they, they've got it, the whole camera, like, the uh, mansion. This is EEA operation. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and so we're like, I was well, going to say, where did these 28 gunmen, were they part of his, like, presidential security? Like, well, are, well, how, how did they get access? <laughs> so two of them are Haitian American. Stop. Like, I remember, I think it was four Colombian. Um, none of them were actually like full fledged Haitian. I, I gotta look this one up, yeah, man, because that's the stuff I used to research. Two that were have Haitian origins are also American citizens, are also uh, either FBI or DA informants. Hmm. It's a weird deal, dude. It's a real weird deal. Interesting. Last it's, couple it's weeks, one, it's yeah. one of those things where you're just like, "What happened?" To possible liability. Well, and and, and, <laughs> uh, and crazy enough, like assassinations at that level these days, 
it's pretty far and few between. Right. They, they happen. They happen. I mean, so I, you know, there's a you know, when I was in that protection arena, like the, like they have an encyclopedia of assassinations. Yeah. Right. There's an actual book out. Right. Well, to me, that's like that's homework. Like yeah. you, you, I want to read this stuff because I want to be able to identify something like that and be like, hey, this is a potential. Uh, you know, we need to be moving. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Right. Like so, if they're committed to the point where they're willing to die for it. You're not stopping it, period, no. right? But you're talking 28 dudes. That, that's an organized hit. Like that, yeah. Um, that's not a dude that just has a vendetta and is going to walk up out of the middle of nowhere what? and smoke you, right? So, so I was listening to a guy who, uh, former military, he's 82nd Airborne, um, and he's like, that's not a prof- like that's not a true professional hit. He's like, that's somebody that's got some money. Yeah, it's a, or like, a coup attempt or something like that. Yeah, but, but that's like Afghan special force. It's, <laughs> it's not like real professional. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. What, what's the end state, right? Like what did these 28 people have to gain? Yeah. Uh, were they paid for it? Or uh, is one of them uh, being looked to put be put into that position? Yeah. Or they just truly hated this guy and his family? Uh, well, see, that, but, like, it, but like I said, most of the time when it's something like that or it's a, it's a personal grudge, it's usually one dude. It's like yeah. one person, right? That's, uh, you know, look, uh, it, you go back in history, like Philippines or even in the United States, yeah. there's that one person. Yeah. And they haven't told anybody, so you're never going to figure them out. Yeah. They just have time and place. They got the opportunity. Boom. Make the yeah. shot. If I died, that. Yeah. 28, that's organized, planned, probably right. rehearsed uh, with an agenda. All like, right, so, so who so else is coming into power and why? Right? So, so let's get deeper in. The guy that they've arrested, at, like the head of the gang, it also could be a gang. <laughs> yeah, or, I want the like, rice. I want he, the rice. <laughs> he's the he's the head of the, and uh, he is a doctor, in Florida, also Haitian, Haitian American. Um, and was planning on assuming power once, and. Really weird. It's a coup. It's a coup then. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of, kind of. So this guy was, the election happened in, they have a five-year term. Okay. But he never actually took office because he didn't actually get a majority. He got a plurality. And after all the uh, recounts and everything came out, like he still only had like 33%, but he was the highest percentage guy. And he took power in 2016, and it's a five-year term. So when 2020 happened, they were like, oh, you got out of, out of office. He's like, no, I, I haven't seen five years yet. Like, I got one more. Yeah. yeah so you're like, well, is he right? Not right. I okay. Don't know. Interesting. I don't know. So you're just like, he's kind of got a point. I don't know how that all works. How did his last five years go as far as serving? Like, was he like for the people? Was he tyrannical? Like, uh, was he? Did he think he needed a fucking F fifteen to uh, take? <laughs> I, 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 oh wait, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think he probably was like every other Haitian ever. Like, yeah, he was. He was ready to do whatever. Yeah. I'm staying that. here, God. Yeah. <laughs> I like this house. <laughs> so, like, there's a good chance that somebody within the country. Like, it's not, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it, they're, it they're, is Haiti. Yeah, 28 people, man, that's. Yeah, but, like, start finding all the guy in DA connect. Can, can we just figure out what we're doing here and <laughs> and leave everything else alone? God damn it, guys. <laughs> You know, it's it's like, Haiti, man. Yeah, like, there is no political advantage. To Haiti. Well, they have nothing. It's a what? cool, but it's a it's a cool island. Like like you said, you split with Dominican Republic. I mean, dude, if they could just flip the coin a little bit, they, that could be a tourist destination It'd be like point, the new Jamaica, man. Yeah. yeah, tourist destination point. Man, they just they can't get out of their own way. Sadly, sadly, yeah. Since um, you go the other half of the island. Yeah, stunning, right? Yeah. Like, oh. how, how do you guys keep fucking this up? Yeah, like you guys have. Rape and devastation yeah. over Self here. Self-hate, almost. And like, you have beats and baseball players over yeah, here. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you guys yeah. doing? God it's damn it. It's the same oh. rock. You it's have the, the same, same rock. genetics. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> fucking rock. Same genetics. It's not even a big one. Yeah. Different language, and boy, apparently French fucks it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Yeah. All right. Stone Cold.
Yes, getting sir. one more in on this. Sounds good. I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go, Mark. Gun. Like Ooh, I like that. I, I'm not. I'm not a gun nerd, but I'm always so, willing to. Uh, I'm, more. I'm not technically a gun nerd to the point of understanding, like gunsmithy stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, so for example, when I got my sniper rifle in the Ranger Battalion, I'm like, this is the best thing ever. This is handed to me, like by God, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a 308 sniper rifle. God knows how many snipers before me had it, right? Is Remington the barrel shot out? Yeah, yeah. Remington 700 action, bull barrel, 24 inch, blah blah blah. I, I knew every detail statistic of it. But I didn't understand barrel twist, muzzle velocities, uh, uh, the the stuff I've I have now researched, educated on, and and f- well, you know the the advent of modern sniping as brought to us by like Todd Hodnett, where, where he's like, hey, we can reverse engineer a shot mathematically. Say what? <laughs> like that's fascinating, right? Yeah, we did it through trial and error and shot after shot. Well, dope, right? Data yeah. on previous engagement. Shoot, 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 write that shit down. Yeah. We don't have to do that. Like, I can figure this out with a few shots. Yeah. Reverse engineer the shot. Like, game-changing stuff, man. So we've come so far from my days of um, the, the field craft of it and the, 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 te- the, the uh, embedded talent, if you will, and yeah. understanding a mill dot reticle and how to break that into tents and all this other stuff to where in 20 minutes I can have you bang and steal at 1,000 yards. You know how long it took me to do that as a, as a, as a gangster ass sniper in the Rangers? Huh. <laughs> it took a bit, right? Yeah. It took a, a bit uh, because our rifles, for one, basically started falling out at 800. Mm-hmm. So if you're banging steel or, or shots at uh, 800 to 1,000, you, you knew your shit and you yeah. had a good gun, right? Yeah. Uh, some of those guns, man, depending on the barrel wear, this and that, stuff started falling out of the air. 308, ballistically, becomes unstable, you know, just, you know, right around 800 yards, you know, yeah. without giving you an exact number. So what do you think the probability of first round hit at 1,000 is on that? It's in, it's in the low 20 percentile. Yeah. Boom, 6.5 Creedmoor pops up. We're in the high 80s, mm. you know, mid 80s. Let's say mid 80 percentile. Yeah. If I'm in Vegas, which one do you take? <laughs> no, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, right. right. I would take this Creedmoor. You yeah. know, oh, it's, it's a you, smaller bullet, so- higher ballistics. First round hit probability, still killing shit. Like, yeah. So, and I think I would be considered in the gun world. I, I don't know if I'm like fully in the FUD category, but like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty solidly in the FUD community, just because I just like old shit, you know. It's like I like, I like what I, but I also caveat. I never had anybody shooting at me, or I never had to like look over anybody shooting at somebody. Uh, that I love. Right. So, I, all I'm doing is deer, baby. Goddamn coyotes. Yeah, it's so, like, like... Bane of my existence, man. Yeah, so a Savage, <laughs> Savage 308 is fine for me, you know? Right, and I look at a Savage 308, I'm like, it's an entry-level gun. It's not a bad gun, like, but it's, I'm not, I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> uh, but there's a reason, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> peasant, right? But there's a reason. I, I, after this... I'll show you a couple of my rifles. It, it, <laughs> purpose built. Yeah, <laughs> it's like right. Purpose built, and I spend money on that because I'm decreasing the uh, uh, I'm decreasing the variables, right? Yeah. And if I know I got a lights out gun, yeah, that's one variable I'm not worried about. Yeah. So I, I got rid of that. Now I know it's either me or the bullet. Right? <laughs> so, well, okay. Now we start doing hand loads and mm-hmm. building the bullet to that gun. That's gone. Yeah. Now if I'm missing. It's me, right? yeah, or, exactly. or maybe the scope, right? Yeah. Uh, so, as you start to reduce those variables, probabilities go up, yeah. And, and that and that's the game, man. Is but the beauty of hunting, shooting altogether, is do you need a ten thousand dollars sniper rifle? Absolutely not. You no. don't. You don't. But you got to understand the probability of first round hit for that gun, your ability, yeah. and when you understand that and manage it. It goes up because yeah. now I know, hey, 450 yard shot with this gun, yeah, is not is, is the the probability is not there. Oh, or hey, I got a ten thousand dollar sniper rifle. I just humped up the side of a mountain chasing an elk mm. at eight thousand feet, and I'm doing about 160 beats a minute, and I'm a standing shot. Yeah, there's no 
fucking way of making a six hundred yeah. <laughs> shot. Six hundred yard shot, right? Yeah. One hundred twenty yards becomes one hundred twenty yards is a hard shot, right? Yeah. So there, there's factors, and it's just yeah. understanding that. And that's the yeah. that's what I really dig about this stuff is I don't have to know um, barrel break in or or uh, how to tear it apart and. And like this is that like I'm not a gunsmith, right? Yeah. But I am a I am a student of the yeah. gun. I focus my energy on the, uh, the I guess the external parts. You can say like, yeah. hey man, take this uh, this pistol apart. Eh, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, can you fix this? Eh, nah, probably not. Yeah. I can show you how to shoot it better. Does that does that make sense? So I don't geek to the point of uh, the uh, engineering. I guess yeah. you could say. But I geek on the side of all the information I can gather to increase my probability of first round hit. Yeah. And then we can do it through math. And I sucked at math in high school, which yeah. is crazy. Like, I don't need this shit. I need dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what do, and I get the military like, sniping, right? Math. Uh, military free fall jump master. Like, it's math. Like, yeah. you know, throw somebody out of the back of a plane, you better know, you know, uh, for, uh, uh, forward, dr- uh, not drift. I'm going to, you know. You know, your forward thrust, mm. coming back, uh, descent, uh, rate descent, you know, uh, had a couple beers now. But, like, okay, I'm, saying, I'm going this many feet forward about, for this many believe. feet down, right? <laughs> I go three feet forward for every foot I go down or five feet forward yeah. for every foot. I need to know that when I exit the plane. Mm. And if my plane's doing 140 knots this way, when I go out the back of that plane, how far am I getting slung yeah. this direction before – I actually start to fall. You know, yeah. is that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah it's all sure. math, right? We're yeah. doing the same thing with bullets. Todd Hodnett has done a fantastic job of simplifying it so that guys like me can crack the code on it, share that information, that knowledge with uh, cowboys, kids, yeah. women, uh, so they can have a great time shooting, increase their probability. For, when you're actually hitting shit, the fun meter starts pegging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so right. When you're missing, it just pisses you off, well, right? Especially like, it, like you're just target shooting. You hear that? That ding. That, that ding yeah. yeah. Like, that's that's awesome. Cool thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, so when we apply that with my training, say, uh, as it applies to hunting, bring your gun, and you're like, okay, about this time, I'm starting to fall off. Yeah. All right? That, that's your max limit right yeah. there. So now when you're using modern technology range finder and you see that trophy bowl you range it and it's like that's well within my yeah re- your confidence goes up you're not as panicked right yeah. and you make it a more accurate more ethical shot yeah. or you're like I, my ass needs to crawl i need to start crawling <laughs> i need to get closer right? right based on what you have and uh, and your probability of first-round hits. So that, that's that's the game, right? And if it's not a first-round hit, it's a fast follow-up. Yeah. But if you never see the first-round hit because your position's bad, uh, the recall's bad because you're not managing, so then what what is your call? Yeah. So we, we teach that, too, and no, no. how we build that position uh, so that we can catch that that impact uh, based on being on the gun correctly. So yeah. there's like you said, it's just a, it's just a simple thing. No, it's not. <laughs> it's yeah. a, we make it simple, but there's so many little pieces that go into mm-hmm. it. That's where I get uh, I I get fascinated with all these minutia, these little uh, mechanics. Right? Let's talk pistols. Let's, yeah. let's just dump into that seven fundamentals of shooting uh, of shooting. Right? Stance, grip. Side picture, side alignment, trigger control, breathing, follow through. Like, uh, okay, well, define stance when it, as applies to shooting. I don't know. Like, I stand there and I'm stable. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, okay. Well, what does a stance need to do for you? It needs to do certain things. Manage recoil. Uh, gave me, give me stability. Uh, allow me range of motion uh, and, and mobility. Uh, mm-hmm. all, uh, without diving into it, right? But if you never took the time to dissect what that has to do for you, the mechanics of that fundamental. Yeah. How do you know where to refine and enhance to make it better? Right. right. <laughs> Same thing with long range. So, yeah. uh, so when I get into the pistol craft, which is much easier to miss <laughs> at yeah. close distance and what you're probably going to have on any given day, right? Quality of the gun, understanding the fundamentals, how to apply those fundamentals under stress. But if you don't understand the fundamentals, which is what's separate, it's fundamentals and the fundamentals, mm-hmm. whether you're a grandmaster shooter or beginner. Yeah. There's only seven. You got to do them. How do we do them? How do we dissect those fundamentals 
blow out the mechanics of it. Like you know, it's like that blow out picture of a yeah. gun. Like when you take it apart and lays it all out, there's a picture of it, and then mm-hmm. you put it all back together. You do the same thing with the the, the fundamentals and the mechanics of it. Um, and then we go into um, like the critical tasks beyond those you know, yeah. or techniques. But the fundamentals are that's it. They're, they're the how same do we do them every time? How do we do them? Yeah. Right? And how do we dissect them to a point that I can create a repeatable process under stress? Well, if I can break those down and uh, dissect the presentation to target or getting the gun in the fight, now you have wickets that you can identify uh, uh, an inefficiency or a deficiency and say, okay, here I'm not getting the muzzle up quick enough, this or that. Otherwise, you just get the gun out. I, I, I pointed at the target. Well, how did you do that? Pretty much across the board on any shooting, shotgun, rifle, pistol. We're trying to figure that out, right? Yeah. Stop. So that's where I geek. Not oh, actually yeah. on the gunsmithing side, but I yeah. geek on that stuff to increase my survivability and lethality and then teach that to other people. Stop. Hell yeah. Well, we got about a... Oh, what do we get? Let's, let's finish this. If you are up for it. Oh, man. All right. Well, we'll... A uh, regular Patreon. Uh, strictly favorite gun. All right. So, uh, mine, uh, tagline is move your ass, we're burning daylight. So, sign <laughs> us off. All right. Move your ass, we're burning daylight. Bam.